Did you know that the loudest instrument in the world is also the heaviest, tallest, one of the oldest, and hardest instruments in the world to play? Well, the pipe organ is all of that and more. It pushes the most limits out of any instrument out there. I was able to experience this firsthand at the Elbphilharmonie Concert Hall in Hamburg, which houses one of the world's most extraordinary organs. I'm not an organist, but I got to spend time on this organ and the experience taught me as a pianist composer something I never learned in the thousands of hours I spent at my piano. In this video, we're going to dig into the amazing features of the organ and how it can help you shape your understanding of music in a way that no other instrument or experience can. This video is made as part of my creative residency at the Elbphilharmonie. Part 1. What even is a pipe organ? I was able to get the best and most direct information about organs from Philip Kleiss, one of the world's leading organ builders. The most important feature of a pipe organ are the pipes, actually. And that's what we sort of see here around us. And basically, every single note is created by a single pipe. Really, the most exciting feature about a pipe organ, that's the separation of providing the instrument with the energy from playing the instrument. Philip Kleiss and I met in the Leishalle, the other major concert hall in Hamburg, where he's currently building a new organ. If you're playing a trumpet, you're producing the energy yourself. If you're playing a violin, you're sort of creating the energy yourself to produce the sound. Only pipe organs are different. There is somebody producing the energy and somebody else playing the instrument. Mozart said that to him, the pipe organ is the queen slash the king of instruments just because of that. At the beginning, there were sort of people pumping big bellows. So one person was having fun and three, four people were doing hard work with big instruments in earlier times. Eventually, these organ blowers were replaced by electric motors. So one can say that the pipe organ is the world's first synthesizer or electronic instrument. But this is hardly an impressive fact compared to all of the other things about the organ. Which brings us to part two. So what exactly are the extremes of the organ? Let's start first with sound. The organ is the loudest non-amplified instrument in the world. It can get as loud as an airplane during takeoff. It also has the largest frequency range, covering sounds as low as below 20 hertz all the way to as high as 16,000 hertz. This also pushes the limits of what the human ear can actually hear. These extremes make sense for where these organs are played, which are some of the world's largest cathedrals and concert halls. So to accommodate these spaces and also compete against the sound of a full orchestra, organs are built to be massive. And the crazy thing is that they're built into a building, which makes the organ inseparable from the structure itself. The pipe organ is part of the building. So it's like an individually built instrument for one location. And it only fulfills its task on one location. I mean, you cannot take that instrument and transfer it to a different place. That means there's no actual way of calculating the size of a pipe organ. But just to give you an idea of the scale of size we're talking about here, the heaviest single organ pipe is recorded at a whopping 1,675 kilograms. That's similar to the weight of an elephant. And the longest organ pipe is over 19 meters long, which is the length of a full-sized basketball court. Another extreme is how you play the organ. Because I'm a pianist, of course I have a head start in terms of playing the keyboard, but here you have to use multiple keyboards plus manage the stops. So far, I, I don't know what stops to use. These control which pipes are activated, which essentially changes the tone of the notes you're playing by switching between higher and lower octaves and adding different layers of harmonics such as fifths, you can mix and match sounds to create different textures and colors. So you're essentially dealing with sound design, kind of like how a producer decides which parts are played by what instrument. 16 foot is one octave lower. So now we have like this. 
like this plus the lower one Whoa. on one key. This means you can play on a piano. <laughs> While you're doing all of this, you're using your feet to play the bass line. Besides playing the instrument itself, a difficult yet fascinating thing about the organ is how you experience the sound in real time. This brings us to the next topic, acoustics. Part 3. How playing the organ makes you a better listener. There's a saying that the most important stop on a pipe organ are the acoustics. For example, if you sort of play very fast, uh, what, what sort of arrives at the ears of the audience might be musical lines that are so dense that you can't read them anymore because of reverberation time. So of course, large churches and cathedrals have the longest reverb time. Concert halls will have more clarity, but still the organist has to deal with the fact that the sound is coming from a very far away distance compared to other instruments. <laughs> There's so much resonance after you play the note, which I'm not used to at the piano. This doesn't last very long. I think experiencing this made me play slightly slower and more deliberately, where I'm actively listening to the sound being produced with every keyboard press, instead of just relying on muscle memory. Another thing that forced me to listen was the fact that I had to control the starting and ending points of every single note that I played. I don't have the luxury of having a sustain pedal. It's not a keyboard instrument, I think. I mean, it is, but you know what I mean? If, uh, if it was a piano, I'd start... But I don't really feel like doing that. It just doesn't feel appropriate. So far, I haven't had that much time on the organ because also to practice on an organ, you have to be in the space itself. It's not something you can just practice in your home or in a practice room. That being said, I experienced a shift in my piano playing after just a few hours of practicing on the organ. During this time, I was practicing this piece of mine and you can hear that the general pacing for it was on the quicker side. When I tried playing this at the organ, I was immediately overwhelmed by all of the stops and I didn't know, of course, how to use my feet. But as I got a bit more used to the instrument, I started to notice details about my playing style that I never thought about. My writing style can be quite percussive and none of that really works on the organ. I feel like my playing has more consequence. As a pianist, I'm so used to this immediate reaction time, and I'm in touch with the instrument on sometimes a very physical level. I think playing on the organ just now exposes some strange habits I have at the piano that work on the piano maybe, but it's more of a tactile thing. I can feel my way through volume, whereas here I can't. Most importantly, I started to notice a significant shift in my listening. I started to understand what it feels like to listen to the sound source coming from across the hall and how not to rely so much on my physical touch on the keyboard. This made me listen ahead, listen thoroughly, and consider the space I'm playing in instead of feeling like I was a small sound generator in the middle of the hall. I had to learn how to embrace the space of the entire concert hall. It's hard to put into words how this affected my playing overall, but I did notice some subtle changes once I returned back to the piano. I allowed more space in between the phrases, I relied less on muscle memory, and I felt my overall pacing was much more composed.
sometimes we make the most improvements away from our main instrument. Even if you don't end up playing on a pipe organ yourself, even just imagining yourself playing on a much more massive instrument in a very reverberant space can perhaps make you listen and play differently. If you enjoyed this, check out my other videos I've been making as part of my creative residency at the Elbflow Morning. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.